this is just uh, when we're struggling we can <laughs> we can connect with our fellow animals in such a way and it's just such a beautiful thing they know how to cheer us up they they make us better Motivation. It can drive us to unlock our potential or hold us back if we're lacking it. In this video, I'm going to share with you a key technique that can help us all to stay motivated and to prevent burnout. While this technique is specific to animal advocacy, it could be applied to other things. So I was recently giving a talk at Indiana University, which was a fantastic experience, and I hope to share content around that here soon. In the Q&A, I was faced with what on the surface may seem like a simple question, but it's actually quite complicated. And that's how to keep these issues um, front of mind, um, specifically with our fellow animals, and, and how to stay motivated. Because I think if we're honest with ourselves, motivation can be a pretty tricky thing. And if everybody was able to lock into their true motivation, everyone who thought veganism and animal rights was the right thing to do would already be doing it. This also applies to our animal advocacy and staying motivated to get out there and stand up for our fellow animals. Now, Tom Reagan, who was the originator of non-rhetorical animal rights, would often at the end of his talks introduce a concept known as the totem animal. Now, quick point on the language, language being a passion of mine, this should be no surprise to many of you, is I'd probably um, prefer the term animal ambassador to totem animal, just to avoid any issues with cultural appropriation or anything of that nature. Now, this is quite a um, personal topic for all of us, and I'm, um, you know, this is kind of a special video for me too to, to share this, so I hope it can help motivate us all to connect with our animal ambassador. Be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video where I'll introduce my animal ambassador, as well as a first hand account of um, Tom Reagan introducing this concept to an audience. Before that, I'd like to invite you um, to participate in this exercise for yourself. What I'd like you to do, if you're able to, is just for a moment, close your eyes. You're still watching, aren't you? Go ahead, just take this moment as a moment to relax and just, just close your eyes. Now I want you to picture one of our fellow animals who you've met in the past, and for whatever reason, um, they needed help, but you were unable to help them through no fault of your own. I want you to think about this interaction and anything that you saw, heard, smelled, touched. Now I want you to picture this individual who needed help and, and picture their face, and if possible, picture their eyes. And I want you to try to let that image of their face burn into your mind and become a part of it. And think about how in this moment, this interaction made you feel of not being able to help them. This face you're picturing is your animal ambassador. Now, I want you to make a commitment to your animal ambassador. Look them in the face and tell them that you are never going to stop. You're going to continue to do everything you can to help the fellow animals who you can help in their memory, even though you could not help them. Make the commitment to them that you will never burn out. You will never stop short of everything in your power to do what you can for our fellow animals. And this is different for all of us, but we can all do something. And I think it's easy to forget that sometimes when there's not tangible change happening around us. But you can make a difference. And your animal ambassador can help inspire you to do just that. If you're thinking about burning out, use your animal ambassador as a, as a symbol of why you're doing this. Take care of yourself, because we all know we can't help others until we help ourselves. Because I think we'll all acknowledge that this is a marathon and not a sprint. We need to be active for the long term versus one quick burst and, and then burning out. We're going to have a much bigger impact if we can find a way to stay sustainable for the long term. Also make a commitment to your animal ambassador bit distracted at the moment. Hi Grace. Hello. You could be someone's animal ambassador, couldn't you? Make a commitment to your animal ambassador. 
ambassador that you're going to reach out and connect with other animal advocates so you can you know build a community and support each other and grow together so that we're not in this alone but most importantly make a commitment that you'll never become a revolving door activist and you'll keep doing everything that you can for them well that's it that's um tom reagan's concept um, to help us stay motivated and to picture our animal ambassador and i know this can be some pretty heavy stuff but i think you'll all appreciate if you go through this exercise maybe watch the video back if you want to um, repeat this um, ever down the road um, and i'd like to invite you to share who your animal ambassador is in the comments and maybe any other motivational techniques um, you have because there's a good chance there's another animal advocate reading those comments and it may just help them. So I really hope this exercise is, is helpful to, to all of us to, to stay motivated and um, be an animal rights advocate for the long term. With that, I'd like to close with um, introducing my animal ambassador. Um, he was a pig. Um, in, in Thailand who I came across while we were on holiday while we were living in, in Singapore and I wasn't able to help him um, and just had you can sense that I'm struggling can't you now I'd like to... if anyone out there needs evidence that our fellow animals can experience emotion Grace has just come over here as I was starting to think about my animal ambassador, and um, <laughs> I just think it's the epitome of human supremacy to think we can experience, we human apes can experience emotion and they can't. I mean, this is, this is beautiful here. She just came over to, to comfort me um, when she could tell I was thinking about an upsetting comment and, th and thoughts. So with Grace's support, I would like to introduce to you my animal ambassador. He, he was a pig who I was unable to help in Thailand and <laughs> I've sadly, I think as animal advocates, we've all encountered dozens of individuals who could be our animal ambassador. Um, but he was an individual who I encountered on a trip while I was living in Singapore and visiting Thailand, and I couldn't help him. And we just had a beautiful interaction that I hope you can appreciate why he has become my animal ambassador who I picture to help keep me going. <laughs> so the moral support while I'm doing this video is incredible. Hi, you two. Did you just come over to check on me? You okay, man? Staying cool? And this, this is just, uh, when we're struggling, we can, <laughs> we can connect with our fellow animals in such a way. And it's just such a beautiful thing. They know how to cheer us up. They, they make us better. <laughs> Another great way to stay motivated, visit your local animal sanctuary and help support them and care for the animals there. So anyway, before I get too donkey distracted, <laughs> you are all incredible, you know that? enjoy this clip of my animal ambassador. <laughs> Did you have something else to say, Grace? I feel like you have something else to say. You want to be, you, you want to be in the end of the day. Okay, that's reasonable enough. That's reasonable enough. So with that, I hope you enjoy this clip of my animal ambassador. 
including um, audio from a first-hand account of Tom introducing this concept to one of his audiences. Stay active out there, keep building respect for our fellow animals, especially when it comes to our language. See you in the next video. By popular demand, Tom always gave the concluding talk at these festivals. His talks were humorous, engaging, enlightening, and profoundly moving. Tom was one of the few philosophers who recognized that animal rights appeals to both the heart and the head, and wasn't afraid to appeal to both. In, the to in his concluding talks, Tom often expressed concern about, quote, revolving door animal rights activists, people who become very active in the animal rights movement, but eventually burn out and leave the movement. With animals' lives and well-being at stake, Tom knew that the animal rights movement can't afford to lose any activist. So in closing, I want to share with you an exercise that Tom used to inspire festival, festival goers to remain active in the movement. He asked us to close our eyes and think of a totem animal. So in honor of Tom, please close your eyes. With your eyes closed, I want you to think about a specific animal you once encountered who needed your help or needed rescuing, but who you were unable to help, who for some reason through no fault of your, your own you had to abandon. Picture that animal. Think about how it made you feel to not be able to help that animal. Burn that animal into your, that animal's image into your mind. That is your totem animal. Now, channeling Tom, I ask you to make a commitment to that totem animal to remain active in the animal rights movement. Commit to helping the animals you can help in the memory of your totem animal whom you couldn't help. And never become a revolving door animal rights activist. The animals need you.